So these are the results from the, the first of about 11 phase three clinical trials that are undergoing for different vaccine candidates. These are the big late stage trials that have tens of thousands of patients. Um, and we're just seeing the early results from Pfizer. So this is about 28 days after people received their first of two injections. And look, we haven't seen all the data yet. We've only seen the press releases and the announcements, uh, but the results are very exciting. Uh, what they demonstrated was that in all the people who have received the vaccine, and this is over 40,000 people, that uh, there was about a 90% reduction in COVID-19 symptomatic infections amongst those who received the vaccine relative to placebo. That's better than a lot of us actually expected. Um, and so it's still early days. We need to see the data. We need to let the trial process play itself out, but extremely promising. And so part of that process, I'd imagine, is a longer term reaction, potentially longer term effects. Is that still what needs to happen? Yeah, with these trials, what we're looking for is to try to demonstrate safety and efficacy or effectiveness. So far, really most of the vaccines have demonstrated a good safety profile for this vaccine. There haven't been any significant adverse uh, events that have been reported. People get some mild side effects when they actually receive the jab. Otherwise, so far, it's been tolerated. Of course, you want to follow that out over a long period of time. Some adverse events may be extremely rare, even after a vaccine is approved when it's out in circulation. We still do surveillance to look for those, you know, one in a hundred thousand or one in a million um, adverse events that may be significant. So far on that front, so good. The other is effectiveness. And this is the first result that we've seen that demonstrates that a vaccine actually works to prevent symptomatic infection. We know from earlier trials only that the vaccines generated a strong immune response. That's predictive, but this is the first clinical proof that people who have gotten the jabs are less likely to actually get symptomatic COVID. Yeah, which makes it super exciting. But how long does the protection last? Do we have any indication? We don't know yet, and uh, largely that's because the, the virus is so new, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but also because these vaccines are new. So this result was 28 days out from the first jab. The second jab, because it's a series of two, is at 21 days. So it's very initial. So we know is that up front, there appears to be strong protection. The only way we'll know how long protection may last for is to follow people out over time. We know that people who recover from COVID-19 infection appear to have a good amount of immune protection. We still don't know how long that lasts for. Um, with other coronaviruses, some of the common cold viruses, it's not very long, frankly. It's months to a couple of years. And so it may be we're in a situation where you may need to get a coronavirus jab on a yearly or every couple of yearly basis like we do with influenza. Influenza, um, but only time will tell. And so that would, I'd imagine, really impact scaling up production to deal with a pandemic like this. Absolutely. And obviously, because this affects everyone, everywhere, in all age categories, we're talking about literally billions of people who ideally would need to receive this vaccination. And the Pfizer vaccine, like several of the others, not all of them, requires two doses. The other thing about this vaccine that's quite tricky is that because it's using um, this new messenger RNA technology, it has to be stored at extremely cold temperatures, negative 80 degrees Celsius. That's not a cooler box. That's proper cold storage. That means you're not going to be able to set it up in every GP surgery and in mobile vans and things like that. There are going to be real manufacturing challenge and real distribution challenges to getting this out to all the people who need it. And that's one of the reasons that actually we should be cheering for all the vaccines under development because we don't just need one, we need several. Yeah. In terms of the demographics, though, that they've been targeting and they've been giving this vaccine, have they been looking at people with comorbidities um, and, and, and older populations who may be more vulnerable? Um, a wide range of mostly adult populations. The trial's been done, uh, as most of them, on multiple continents in the global north and the global south, um, including some older patients as well with advanced age, some with comorbidities. We haven't seen a lot with special populations. Normally, what you start is with a mostly pretty healthy population of folks to make sure it's safe and effective, and then you further go into special populations like pregnant women, children, etc. Pfizer started rolling kids um, just a couple of weeks ago, and one or two other 
trials are doing so as well. Um, but you're absolutely right that we know we're going to want to prioritize this vaccine for, for health workers and, and key workers, but also those who are most vulnerable to severe infection. So far, we're getting some good evidence. But again, that's one of the reasons these trials need some time to play out. And beyond playing out just from the testing point of view, give us a sense of the time frame because they've got to get the green light from regulators. So Pfizer has announced they want to apply for emergency authorization for this vaccine within the next month or so based on these early results. And again, we haven't seen these data yet, but their data safety monitoring board obviously has. If that's the case, in a, in a best case scenario, we might see approval for this vaccine before the end of the year or in early 2021. That would be great news. But of course, the question is, how do you then get it to people um, at scale? And uh, all the lead vaccine candidates have been signing these pre purchase agreements where governments are guaranteeing the purchase of 5 million, 50 million, 100 million doses to allow the companies to start to manufacture them at a large capacity um, um, so that when they're ready to go, we can start rolling it out. Um, I believe we're looking at a couple of hundred million doses for this particular vaccine by um, mid-2021. So that's great, but it's nowhere near the scale we're going to need. So what I want people to really understand is that even if everything goes really well with this vaccine, we're not going to see significant numbers of people vaccinated and really turning the tide until really later into 2021. So um, this is great news, um, but it's not reason to sort of take our foot off the gas, to relax with all of our other safety behaviors. We're still going to be uh, needing to live with COVID for some time to come. Peter, great as always to get your analysis. Thanks so much. Thank you.